I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast, For the Health of It, Episode 2. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast, and you'll never miss an episode on how to naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about causes of infertility. And it's a very, very common problem that a lot of people are not talking about. It's not something that the guys certainly won't talk about it, uh, you know, uh, if they're malfunctioning. Uh, it's not something you want to talk about with your friends. You're you're not bragging about it. And so something that kind of goes un, un, unspoken. But when they come into our offices, patients open up to us because they trust us. And they'll say to my doctors, we'll say, you know, gosh, talk about this performance issue or we can't make babies or I, I can't uh, f- uh, finish the job, so to speak. And so it becomes a problem. And I didn't see these things 30 plus years ago when I started in practice, but I see it now regularly. It's It's a commonplace issue. And surprising because it used to be an issue among old people, you know, old, like 60s and 70s, really old, you know, I joke. Uh, And we used to see people with high blood pressure medication, but now we're seeing it in young guys, football players, rugby players, bodybuilders. It's becoming a big issue. So the people you wouldn't expect it from, it's it's an issue. So want to continue on with some chemicals that you're you're being exposed to that may be affecting your uh, functionality, functionability. What's the right word there? Uh, and if you missed the first half of the show, I'm gonna. It's a part of my podcast. You can go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, and you can see our uh, uh, the podcasts are there on the media, and you could listen to it. We have hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of podcasts there. Love to have you listen to as many as you'd like, or all of them. Some people listen to all of them, and it's really gonna educate you. I have people call me all the time, say, Dr. Joe, I want to be like you. I want to be the next Dr. Joe. I want to know what you know. I want to just be able to talk for hours without notes and know everything. And I said, well, you got to study every day, all day for 35 years. And you have to be a good speaker. And you have to know that you know that you know that you know your topic. And they said, where can I go to school for that? I said, we well, can get a degree. However, you really need to learn it on the streets. Unfortunately, a lot of this knowledge is not something you're going to get sitting in a book. You're going to have to get out there and learn. So go to my website and I want to be your, uh, your street teacher. How about that? Nonstick chemicals found in pots and pans, perfluoroalkyl acids, known as PFAAs, are common types uh, of chemicals that are found in these things. And all the acronyms in the world uh, are leading to the problem of couples trying to conceive. Danish study published in Environmental Health Perspective found that men with the highest levels of PFOS, which is one of these chemicals that's found in nonstick pans, and PFOA, another one, had half the number of normal sperm cells compared to men with smaller amounts of the chemicals in their body. So many of you, and I love I love cooking, I love food prep. My first book, uh, Eating Right for the Health of It, the first half of the book tells you how to change your diet. And the second half of the book is well over 200 recipes. Easy, quick, things you can get in a grocery store, nothing complicated, anybody can do it. And everyone is just off the charts. I've had many, many vegans and raw foodists come to me over the years and say, Doc, your book is the easiest way, uh, easiest explanation I've ever found on how to prepare healthy foods. And these are people that like, this is their lifestyle and they still love it. So that's on my website, drjoesposito.com. But it's not just the food, it's what you cook it in. So a lot of us are lazy and we want to use these nonstick pans, which by the way, work extremely well. However, there's chemicals being leached into your food. And if you have a scratch on any of them, throw the pan away. Don't give it away. Don't donate it because then you're just passing the toxins on to somebody else. Throw it away. If you're looking for something nonstick, uh, cast iron. If you know how to use cast iron, uh, you have to uh, oil it up first. And you oil it and then you heat it for a while and the oil kind of sinks into the cast iron. And when you clean it, you don't use soap and water because it dissolves the oil. You kind of scrape it out. You can get like a, 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 I want to say, a a coarse pad, uh, stainless steel. And just scrape it out that way if you need to. And then um, you got to season it. It's called putting oil in it. And that becomes nonstick. Glass is not a bad idea. Uh, Ceramic, probably a good idea. So far, there's no studies out showing ceramic is an issue. But make sure it's ceramic made in America. If ceramic's made in China, chances are you might have some chemicals in there. 
that, of course, they're not going to post as, a, as, as, a, as an ingredient. Oh, we have toxic chemicals in here. So replace uh, your untreated stainless steel uh, or American-made uh, with, uh, or, or, or with American-made cast iron. Make sure it's American-made because that's a big issue. Avoid store-bought microwavable popcorn. These bags contain chemicals that can lead to a disease, no kidding, called popcorn lung. So if you like using your microwave, don't. You should never use your microwave except to, to uh, sanitize your sponge at the end of the day or if you have to heat up a towel. Um, sometimes people have injuries and I want them to use moist heat. I'll say wet a towel, put it in a microwave, and then put it on your body. But I had, my, I had a stove microwave in my house. I had it replaced with a double oven. Um, if you have a microwave, just get a small one. You can, you know, like I said, it's a great way to clean your sponge because your sponge is disgusting. So if you put it in a microwave every night, it'll kill the bacteria, germs, and viruses because the microwaves are so toxic that they kill these things, viruses, germs, bacteria, and fungus. But that's what's happening to your food. It's destroying the DNA in your food. And it's not making it as usable or as healthy as if you didn't use a microwave. You can get, uh, I have one of these things. It's a top of the uh, countertop. It's a dome-shaped oven. It's glass. Love it. Use it constantly. I have it in my pantry. Take it out, plug it in, use it, put it away again. So I, to, I like my house very clean. I'm a minimalist. I don't like a lot of stuff. So it's very easy to use, and that's a convection oven. That's fine. Uh, but the microwave, I'm not a big fan of. But the nonstick chemicals are an issue, and they coat these. Uh, these nonstick chemicals are coated into popcorn bags, uh, pizza boxes, food wrapping. If you buy wrapping with food, if you remember, if you're old enough, food used to stick to the wrapper. It used to stick to the top of the pizza box. I remember peeling off the cheese and eating it, and it tastes cardboard. Well, it doesn't happen anymore. The reason is that the boxes are lined with these chemicals that are endocrine disrupting hormones that act as a uh, nonstick coating. So that's another reason why I don't want you going out for fast food and buying food wrapped in, in, in papers because those papers, chances are aligned with a nonstick coating, which is toxic to your uh, hormones and with gentlemen, your sperm count. Uh, preservatives that we find in food can be an issue. Parabens are used in things like cosmetics, cleaners, some processed foods. And they're preservatives because they're cheap and they're antimicrobial. So if I can throw something in something I'm selling you that's cheap and prevent bacteria from growing, which extends my shelf life, I'm liking it. Well, guess what? Not a good idea. Parabens have been linked to things like breast cancer, but also abnormal genetic changes in the sperm of male right mice that were fed parabens. So once again, it's not just lowering your sperm count, it's lowering the quality of the sperm. And so you're more likely to have a baby that may not be, let's say, 100% of what it could have been had you not exposed yourself to these chemicals. So if you go to a group called the Environmental Working Group, it's kind of a cool group, and they have a, a link there called Skin Deep Cosmetic Safety Database. And you can read about your personal care products and find out which ones are good. You want to eat organic whenever possible. Eat as much unprocessed food as possible. Uh, nice thing for skin, take some extra virgin organic coconut oil and just rub it on your skin, your face, your arms, your legs, anywhere. And peop I tell people to do this all the time and inevitably they come back and say, Dr. Joe, that was amazing. I've bought all these fancy creams and lotions and potions from France and expensive and I can't even pronounce them and they didn't work. Got some extra virgin organic coconut oil, rubbed it on and it was amazing in a couple of days what my skin looked like. And a neat little trick you can do around your eyes too is just rub it around your eyes. And it absorbs pretty quickly. So if you rub it on your eyes before you go to bed at night, it can help with wrinkles, but also can help with dry eye. May not be your cure, but it's certainly worth a shot. Had a lot of people come in with dry eye and they're taking artificial tears and they're talking about surgery. And I said, try the coconut oil for a couple of days. Just rub it around your eyes, close your eyes, rub it all around, let it sink in for a few minutes. And a lot of them come back and say, Doc, my eyes are so much better. Thank you. So that's a quick, cheap fix for a lot of issues. So just get a little jar of coconut oil, put it next to your bed, go to bed at night. Oh, I've got my coconut oil, rub it on. It absorbs quickly. Flame retardants. There are chemicals in flame retardants called polybrominated biphenol eth eth ethers, ethers. Sorry about that. It's called BPDEs. They were phased out due to health concerns, but a lot of them are still in the environment. So if you have something that is flame resistant, it can become a problem. And one of the issues is, let's assume you buy a couch and you spray it with the uh, stain coating or it's flame retardant, <coughs> excuse me, and you sit on that couch, every time you sit, the dust rises up, gets into your lungs and into your body. 
So that's a big issue. So what do you do about it? If you have furniture that meets California's TB117 flammability law, it's usually found on the tag, what you can call a manufacturer, this stuff is doused with flame retardant chemicals. So surprisingly, we put this on there to prevent fires and we started causing hormone issues. Oh, we blew it. When you buy furniture, try to request untreated foam, or if you can afford it, purchase naturally flame retardant furniture made with organic cotton or wool, usually a combination. So that's a big issue. New stuff is a problem because it has these chemicals in it. So I'm, I, like, I like old stuff. Now, that being said, I did buy a piece of furniture one time, a turn of the 18th century, beautiful armoire. And when I got it home, I assembled it and I, I, I used it and I started noticing it got dusty. So I kept wiping off the dust, wiping off the dust. It was mold. It was moldy, so I had to get rid of it because the mold was in the wood and I didn't know what to do about it. I tried r rubbing a coating on it, you know, chemical preserve uh, sealant. I don't know what it, where it came from, but it was just everywhere. So what well, didn't work well for me. So just be careful. And, and a good rule of this is that if it smells, if it has a new car smell, a new carpet smell, a new couch smell, uh, these are chemicals that are usually going to adversely affect your health. And you got to avoid those. Sugar. Got to talk about sugar, boys and girls. It's going to affect your love life and for men especially. It's in almost every type of processed food you find under the sun. Added sugars are likely killing your sperm count. University of Utah researchers found that when they fed mice similar to what an average American eats daily, there were 25 less like they were 25% less likely to successfully reproduce. Now, that's a one in four shot, folks. That's pretty big. Increasingly, the mice generally didn't get fat or show signs of high blood pressure. They were more likely to die and have fewer babies. So just eating a, the, what you consider normal amount of sugar sped up the, the, life, uh, the aging process in mice and, and their ability to make babies. So you've heard my show. If you've listened to me before, I want you to stay away from sugars. Added sugars are doing all types of horrible things to your body. Don't exceed the American Heart Association's recommended sugar levels, which is five teaspoons for women and nine teaspoons for men. How much sugar in a can of soda? About nine teaspoons. That's your whole day's allowable amount of sugar for men in one can of soda. Now, that means you can't eat any other processed carbohydrates or even natural carbohydrates for the rest of the day. It's not going to work. It can't work because you're not going to get enough nutrients then. For children, three teaspoons of sugar. You give your kid a can of soda, they drink a third of it. How many kids drink a third of a can of soda? Zero. That's all the sugar they can get for the entire day. That's pretty wild, isn't it? So I want you to stop eating your sugar, and especially things that are high in sugar. Breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. And what you need to do is you also need to increase your fiber. Because fiber pushes, wraps around sugar and pushes it through the colon. So if I'm going to eat sugar in beans, let's say, well, there's a certain amount of fiber and a certain amount of carbohydrates in there. And these are, these are complex carbohydrates, not simple carbohydrates like sugar, table sugar. So what I do is I take the amount of sugar, carbohydrates that's found in a, beans. I minus the amount of fiber that's found in the beans. And what's left is called the net carbs. How much is actually there that you might be using? So for every gram of fiber, you can redu reduce a gram of sugar, minus a gram of sugar or carbohydrates. So what do we do then? We want to shoot for about 40 net grams of carbs a day. That's tough to do because it's everywhere. But make sure you subtract the fiber and you'll, you'll be amazed. If you can get to 40 net carbs a day, you will lose weight, have energy, feel great, assuming you're not replacing it with things like cheeseburgers because that's not healthy either. What you're replacing it with is a lot of fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. My diet. People say, well, Dr. Joe, what do I do? Start out my morning with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's just, I start every morning with that. A little bit of coconut milk, ramen milk, shake it up and drink. It gives me energy, gets my day started. You should have a cup of tea in the morning. In the summer, I may have a cup of iced tea, but it's always herbal, it's natural, it's organic, sweetened with stevia, not sugar. Then I'll have maybe two, two pieces of fruit. Maybe I'll have some oatmeal in the morning if I want to get really crazy and party wildly. And then I move on to a snack time. Now, if you drink a lot of fluids, this is what works. You're going to be able to go from breakfast to lunch without eating. So a lot of fluids. I have at least two cups of tea in the morning, big glass of water. Sometimes I'll have something called kombucha. So I'm drinking a lot of fluids to get my day going. 
And then I'm usually good until around lunch. And by lunch, I'm hungry. So then I have a big salad. I'll throw in some nuts, some seeds, some uh, sesame seeds, uh, walnuts, uh, uh, what do you call it? Sliced walnuts or sliced almonds. Maybe some chickpeas in there, garbanzo beans, same thing. And a salad dressing. And if I can, I add some apple cider vinegar, about two tablespoons, because the apple cider vinegar is going to help my digestive system and give me a ton of minerals. Now I'm good. I'm held over. Usually I start getting hungry around four o'clock again, four or five, and then it's time for dinner. So if you can allow yourself to get hungry between meals, you're probably eating the right amount of food. Don't go starving either. And then for dinner, dinner is a little more variable. It depends if I go out to dinner with my friends, if I make dinner at home. The other day we had a store moving in. So I went to the store. I made some cabbage. I made some cabbage and beans, uh, broccoli rabe, which we call rapini here in the South. I cooked up some of that. Asparagus were on sale. And so now I have food that I can take for lunches or dinners or I can freeze them. But I like to have food on hand. This way I know I'm, I always have something to grab when I'm in a rush and I'm always in a rush. So folks, and, and also minimum amount of nutrients is super greens an essential source. So start there. Dr. Joe's adrenal supplements. I probably recommend most people take them if you're under stress. So minimum supplements for the day. Super greens, essential source, and for most people, adrenal supplements. I also take omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D if it's not summertime, if I'm not getting sunlight. Uh, I take uh, uh, sometimes digestive enzymes if I'm eating a cooked meal. But all the supplements, all the information that we have are on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Or you can go on Amazon. We have an Amazon page there, too, and you can order all our supplements. We have a bunch of supplements. My books are there. If you want to listen to podcasts, they're on the website, drjoesposito.com. If you have questions, send them to me through the website. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. So the website's a great source of information, drjoesposito.com. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, you can do it through the website or you can call us, 844-44-DR-JOE, and we will uh, get you set up an appointment. We accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents. If you've ever been in a car accident, you need to come see us, ever. Because if the car was damaged, you were damaged. No one gets away unscathed in a car accident ever because you're not tougher than solid steel. Uh, many times if you, if we're not in your insurance network, it's, you have better benefits with out of network benefits than in network benefits. So even though we're not listed in your network book, there's a reason for that. It's usually cheaper for you and better for us to not be in network. So call first and let us help you uh, make those decisions. And the website again, drjoesposito.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth and Stockbridge. So I want to talk about cell phones and how cell phones are really killing us, especially the boys. 65% of adults ages 25 to 29 live in households with only one, with only cell phones. And what's happening is even if you have alarm systems, I have an alarm system at my house, um, many times you don't need a landline anymore. They just send it out wirelessly. So that's kind of cool too. But a review of what's called a meta-analysis, which is an analysis of a bunch of different studies, looked into the impact of low-level electromagnetic radiation, which is what comes off things like cell phones, uh, on sp- and sperm quality, both in the lab and among male patients at fertility clinics. Their analysis of 10 such studies showed that the exposure to ele- electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic frequencies from cell phones lowered sperm motility by 8% and sperm viability by 9%. Previous studies also found that cell phone radiation can affect men's sperm count, the quality, and the mobility. So, if you have a cell phone... Chances are you do. Chances are you're listening to me right now on your cell phone. Do not, under any circumstances, put it in your front pocket, in your pants, because that's not good for your swimmers. Ladies, I see women do this. They put their phone in their bra. Not a good idea, because there's other studies showing that there's an increase in breast cancer right over where the cell phone was. It's electromagnetic frequencies. It's not some mystery energy that we can't figure out what it is. We know what it is. Electromagnetic radiation is not, it's changing the cell structure. Just like a microwave will change the cell structure. And when you change the cell structure, it can become a cancerous cell. So what I do when I have my phone, and I have a phone too, if I have to put it anywhere in a pocket, I put it in my back pocket. I usually carry a little bag with my lunch in it, so I put my cell phone in there. When I get in the car, I put it on the seat next to me or on the floor. At home, I have it far away from my head. I try to get out of the room if I can. If for some reason it needs to be in my room, I put it on the other end of the room. You don't want to have these electromagnetic frequencies flying around in your body. They also found if you put a laptop on your lap, gentlemen, it can lower your sperm count. 
So don't do that. Because these are all things. And again, you think, well, I don't care. Doc, I'm not going to make babies. This is a good thing. No, it's not a good thing because it can adversely affect your cells and that can lead to abnormal cell growth, sometimes known as cancer. Discussion, uh, cell phones and Wi-Fi, are children, fetuses, and fertility at risk? Leading experts of top universities said this, and quote, there is a direct relationship between duration of cell phone use and sperm count decline. Sperm count is reduced by half in men who carry cell phones in their pants pockets for four hours per day. The mo- mo- motility of the sperm is also impaired. The testicular barrier, barrier that protects sperm is the most sensitive of, all of the tissues in the body and is 100 times more absorbent. Besides sperm count and function, the mitochondrial DNA of the sperm are changed three times more if exposed to phone radiation. So we love this cell phone. I love my cell phone. So if I'm going for a walk with it, I always hold it in my hand. And this way it's away from my body. Try to get it away from your body as much as possible because it is causing problems and it is causing fertility issues. There's no question about it. The DNA mutations have been linked to damage of the, on the male side of research uh, from Iceland. The, absorption, uh, the assumption being that male sperm is more vulnerable than female eggs, which are more protected. Mutations increase with the age of the father and more autism and schizophrenia are, the, are found with, based on the age of the father as well. So us old guys, we got to be careful making babies, especially if you have cell phones around. So don't do that. Data suggested men who plan to father children in particular may want to consider carrying their cell phones uh, on their belts or in their pockets, uh, not carrying on their belts in, uh, uh, in close proximity to the reproductive organs. In addition, both men and women have a number of other sensitive organs in general areas, such as the kidneys, uh, their colon, their bladder, all of which is susceptible to radiation. So, ladies, put it in your purse. Gentlemen, if you have a purse, that's a man purse, uh, or you carry it in your hand, just get it away from your body because it really is causing some problems. Uh, Dr. Davis, uh, Dr. Devra Davis, one of the world's most respected and credentialed researchers in the dangers of cell phones, says uh, cell phone radiation can alter your DNA, alter brain metabolism. This is why if you ever read the booklet that came with your cell phone, which I bet you didn't, It says in most of them, all the ones I've ever seen, it says, do not put the phone next to your ear. What? Don't put it next to my ear. How am I going to use it? Hold it about a half inch to an inch away from your ear. Put it on speakerphone or get a wired headset. Not a wireless headset, a wired headset. And so put it, I, if I'm in the car and I'm talking, I put my headset on. If I'm at home, I put my headset on. I never you never put this on next to my ear unless for some reason I don't have my headset. And then I still hold it away from my ear. And if you're in the car, also open the windows. Because there's some research showing, and I'm not even sure I understand this, but this is what research shows, that the electromagnetic frequencies bounce around in your car if the windows are closed. If you open the windows, that seems to help. Now, I don't understand that one, and I understand a lot of things, but... Why not? Why take a chance? Open your window, open your sunroof or your moonroof, whatever. I forget which one opens. Uh, Also can compromise your spinal cord and affect learning abilities. Now, I'm a chiropractor. My team of doctors and I are chiropractors. We want to get you healthy. We want to make sure the message is getting from your brain, down your spine, out to your body and back up again. Chemically or physically, we can alter the, uh, the messages. And now cell phone radiation can also alter the messages. So we, when patients come in our office, we give you a treatment plan based on what you need, not what you think you need, what you need. It's usually no more than 60 days. It's not that big a deal, but you got to follow our advice because a lot of people come to the chiropractor for pain. We give them a few adjustments and say, you know, I feel better. I don't need to go back there anymore. No, let's look at your x-rays. Let's look at your exam findings. Chances are we only got rid of the pain. We didn't fix the problem. So cell phones now can mess with you. And if you come into my office, we, my doctors can show you how we can test you for your cell phone. And I do this a lot on my videos. If you go to my website, we have tons of hours of videos, lectures, and I've done it with cell phones already. We just have somebody hold a cell phone next to their chest and they can't hold their arms up. Their muscles go totally weak. So if you want to watch videos, if you want a, a podcast of videos or audios, go to my website, drjoesposito.com. I think you should be ordering at least Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, probably Dr. Joe's Adrenal Supplements if you're stressed out or tired or old. And we have a host of other supplements on there too. Uh, colon cleansers, immune builders. Uh, they're all on the website, drjoesposito.com. Uh, also on Amazon. You could also order my books there too. 
So if you want to do that, I think you should do it. And try it. Do it for a month. See what happens. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. People with all insurances, no insurances, many times out-of-network benefits are better than in-network benefits. So before you jump to conclusions and say, well, you're not my network, it might be cheaper for you and better for us if we don't use your insurance. So check that and see. And if we're in network, we have to use the insurance. We're not in network, we don't. So that's why that's there. And if you've ever been in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. 100% 100% of the time. The website to make appointments, send me questions, order supplements, drjoeesposito.com. Thanks for listening to For the Health of It. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on wsbradio.com and on the WSB Radio app.